Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, the uh, big video project that I'm working on currently uh, is massive. Uh, I have found the uh, theme song that I'll put in the description whenever I get it finished. Uh, I'll Follow the Sun by the Beatles. And uh, uh, in there, there's uh, a lot of things to be brought up. It'll be a, a, a presidential legacy of Russell M. Nelson. And so we've got to cover events in 2017 as uh, Nelson had to step up with Monson being bedridden. And uh, <clears throat> uh, there's going to be a, a number of things that uh, most of you will have forgotten, and many that will be, oh yeah, that happened, didn't it? And there's a, a tendency to forget the past, to forget history, as uh, we are witnessing that in Israel right now, as uh, the Palestinian Hamas and uh, Israel are duking it out again, as uh, Democrats who are uh, supportive of Muslims over Israel are uh, calling out uh, the Israelis as the most horrific people on the face of the earth. And they're using descriptive words that are comparable to Hitler of Nazis World War II Germany. And, and I apparently am the only one who sees it. Because the Holocaust is what is termed for World War II's Nazi Germany. And all Muslims and white supremacists are all Holocaust deniers. Not because they believe that there was some kind of fraud committed to cover it all up. No, no, it's because of their racist bigotry. <clears throat> and so here we are again as Democrats this time. See, we already have conservatives who uh, are evangelical for the most part, especially for MAGA, who all claim to love the Jews, but then you get down dirty and you find out that they believe in Revelation, that they believe is a prophecy about the end of the world in Jerusalem, where all the world will be attacking the Jews in Jerusalem and utterly destroying them except for a very few when Jesus Christ, the Trinity God, comes from outer space and saves the Jews and converts them to the true religion of the white supremacist God. <laughs> and Christians call themselves the true church. Okay. Well, we have today another thing where history has long since been forgotten as uh, debates in Mormonism are about what can you do on the Sabbath day. And there have been many talks by the prophets that have explained it so that Mormons don't have to fear and tremble, oh no, am I violating the Sabbath day? <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> Mormons are as they are. And so, you know, the questions of, of Am I allowed to go shopping on the Sunday, especially when we don't have bread for the sacrament? We got to get bread. It's too late to make it. Does anybody make their bread anymore? 
<laughs> and uh, my mom had a good bread recipe, but uh, I'll, I'm going to stray on a tangent if I can talk about that. Uh, you know, and, or do you get white bread for the sacrament for the white supremacist God? Or do you, does it not matter according to the doctrine and covenants? What you shall eat or what you shall drink for the sacrament, as long as your eye be single to the glory of God. When you get into those nitpicky nonsense issues about what you can or can't do. Can you watch the Super Bowl? It's a once in a lifetime event every year. It's only on Sundays. There's nothing we can do. You know, Steve Young got ri ridiculed by Gordon B. Hinckley about his not being in attendance because he had to play a football game. <laughs> or whatever. <clears throat> and, and then you get some Mormons who say, oh, it's not about what we can't do. It's about what we can do. And so only home teaching gets done on the Sabbath. And uh, people sleep to day of rest. <laughs> or they'll, they'll spend the once a week studying of the scriptures. And with the advent of audio books, listen to the scriptures while they sleep. <laughs> Learning through osmosis. <clears throat> and the church has even added in the first Sunday of every month, except for conferences, uh, fast Sundays. You know, and, and so that's a whole nother doctrinal topic on its own as to whether you can do fasts outside of Sunday or not. But uh, the concept of is church the only place where you can do the sacrament? Is it only a Sabbath day thing? And uh, uh, those kinds of questions. And do you really need to have a bishop when the father and sons have the priesthood to do the sacrament on their own and within their family? This was a, a discussion that the church decided to step in after I did my video <laughs> to say, no, you must get permission to do the sacrament. Doesn't matter if you have authority. <laughs> and what good is the authority if we have to subject ourselves to the prophets in all that we do? <clears throat> Or refer to our local bishop and stake president for guidance, dear God. And and this comes from uh, the scriptures, obviously. You know, you have the Exodus and the, the Bible that talks about uh, tomorrow is the day of Pentecost, Shabbat probably butchered the pronunciation uh, for the Jews which is the day when Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments and uh, thou shalt not thou shalt um, observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy and so that's the only thou shalt and all the rest were thou shalt not stay away from your neighbor's wife Stay away from your neighbor's knife. I sense a... Cat in the hat thing. Dr. Seuss. <clears throat> and so the, the Mormon scriptures, Book of Mormon, has a Benedi, and uh, he's arrested, thrown in the dungeon, and tortured and then the priests interrogate him, the priests of King Noah, and uh, they're trying to trip him up on scripture, trying to catch him in a lie. Oh, you said that 
at 17.03 seconds in your YouTube video that <laughs> can you explain this and Abinadi returns with a reply banned <laughs> and he quotes the Ten Commandments you guys aren't following the Ten Commandments. You're coming after me, accusing me falsely of not following the Ten Commandments when you yourselves are not teaching the people and following it yourselves. And so Mormons, therefore, oh, the Bible is confirmed. The Ten Commandments are real. They were written by Moses as tomorrow is the anniversary. As we are 3,333 years from that Exodus date, according to the Jews. So tomorrow is a significant day. So I'm sort of doing two birds with one stone here in this video. <clears throat> but there's some problems. Why do we celebrate the Sabbath on Sunday and not Saturday? Because in Semitic Hebrew, uh-oh, I gave you a clue. Sabbath and the number seven are similar. In fact, the consonants are the same. It's the vowels that change the meaning. <coughs> and, and when you go back in history, doing your research, you find that it was a, 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 a pope who designated our calendar that we're currently using the Gregorian calendar of Pope Gregory and so uh, Sunday is now the first day of the week not the seventh and the Saturday was the Jewish Sabbath Saturday Saturn well that's strange why would it be Saturn? How is he Jesus Christ? Because he's actually the Heavenly Father of Jupiter. Which, in the Greeks, is Zeus. Which, uh, then, uh, his son, Perseus, would be the Jupiter comparison. The half-man, half-god, who... Uh, what was her name? Persephone? Per I can't, can't remember her name. <clears throat> but uh, he flies on Pegasus. Oh, hey, John in Revelation talks about uh, Jesus Christ flying on Pegasus and the last day, judgment day, the end of the world, when he comes to smite the Jew or uh, the Muslims, converts the surviving Jews to the white supremacist Christianity but uh, if you don't know I'm the one who deciphered Paleo-Hebrew so Zeus uh, the us us part of it has to be dropped because that's the masculine singular grammatical termination and so you have za and za is pictorially the same as Paleo-Hebrews word for the Hebrew God Yah. And so it's most likely Zah rather than Yah, which is Semitic. Ooh, giving you clues again. But where did the concept of celebrating the Sabbath on the first day, which is the day of the sun, Sunday, begin? Well, that was Constantine. And uh, he was the one who created Christianity. Created God. Created the name for God. The nature and character. Amusius. Brand new Greek word. Brand new God. Brand new Greek word. And thus created all of the holy days and the 
the sites in Jerusalem for where they historically now happened. Yeah, now they're historical. And this is where we're getting to it. <clears throat> because, uh, uh, <clears throat> if you're unfamiliar with the method of writing scripture among the early Roman period groups, congregations, can't quite call them Christians in the sense of Trinity Christians, because obviously they were before Constantine's Trinity God. They were uh, uh, therapeutae, uh, and, uh, and thus healers, because ther therapy, therapeutae. They had their little congregations all around the Middle East, Alexandria, Turkey, you know, the places where the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles talk about visiting. And uh, they would write scripture uh, as uh, the Romans were slaughtering everybody. Uh, they, uh, the emerging groups, the different congregations would have a bishop in charge. they would uh, have their own gospel narrative written and they obviously weren't alive during the time of the actual authors and that was the whole thing is that they would write in an author attribute an author to the text so that people would believe that it was actually the document of that particular author because if you just put it the name of the guy who was writing it, nobody know you, knows you and would say, ah, uh, yeah, whatever, you're just writing your own doctrine, your own gospel. So you attach somebody famous to the name, and bada book, bada boom. And so, yes, <coughs> the Bible itself was written during this same time period. The Bible has anachronisms just like the Gospels, which means it's historically inaccurate. Thus the five books of Moses are not written by Moses. They're written by a Jew who attached the name of Moses. Now hold on. We're going to get to explaining this, and it's not going to be comfortable, but this is truth. You have to accept it. You can't just give your opinion and then call it truth. <clears throat> because it's that word Semitic where if you are anti-Semitic blaming the Israelites for the war in Israel it refers to the Mesopotamian region. And that author claims that Abraham came through Shem, who settled Mesopotamia. Some major problems. <laughs> As Shem is son Ammon, if you're familiar with that, Adam Ondai Amen in Mormonism. He's Emmanuel Amenel in Isaiah. <coughs> and thus is in Egyptian is called the name because of his mysterious name that Hathor had to uh, coerce out of Ra, Amen Ra. And then she went on a drunken rampage, killing mankind as a as the cow. And so uh, that's where you're seeing the Bible tell people that the Jews originated from, that the house of Israel originated from. 
And wouldn't you know it, that's where the Sabbath, on the seventh day of the week, which was considered a day of rest, as Genesis chapter 2 tells us, originated with Babylon. Not Assyria, not Sumer, Babylon. Those 600 BCE people. 600 BCE. Babylon created a new calendar system with seven day weeks the number seven being a superstitious number and so the seventh day of the week was a day of rest from your regular labors because it's a superstitious day you don't want to be cursed when were the Jews in Babylon oh yeah the captivity the Jews got assimilated. As much as the Jews of today have forgotten their history and believe that they stood strong because Daniel stood strong, which Daniel again, fictional character, created during that same time period after the captivity, which was actually a, uh, a lesson for the Jews during the Roman period to tell them not to assimilate into the Romans by using a fictional character named Daniel who was in Babylon who apparently was able to not be assimilated and so yeah that's what happened that's why Jews are Semitic is because they've forgotten their origins they're not Babylonian they did not come from Ur of Babylon, where the Temple of Marduk is, which everybody thinks is the Tower of Babel. It's in Beirut, Lebanon, guys. <laughs> and it was not a tower, it was the, the uh, dedge pillar of Osiris that was carved in the cedar of Lebanon after uh, Osiris's coffin beach to shore that's the Egyptian story this is that's the origin of religion is the Egyptians and so the whole concept that uh, the origin with Adam and with Moses down to Moses had a Sabbath day on the seventh day and it was a day of rest no, that's an anachronism. That's imposing the Babylonian creations of the calendar system and the whole superstition of number seven and the seventh day, day of rest. That's being imposed prior to when it was created. That's called an anachronism. And already I've pointed out two major anachronisms in the Bible text in the book of Moses or five books of Moses and and so you have to accept that you can't just deny history you can't deny truth this is where it all comes from, guys. The whole paranoia you have today over whether or not flicking on a light switch on the Sabbath constitutes work and therefore is a sin of violating the Sabbath day, not making it holy, all comes from Babylon. And you're saying, well, how was the sacrament, pra or the, how was the Sabbath practiced? prior to Babylon, Travis. Every day is a P-Day. <laughs> <When I, laughs> I don't know if you've had a missionary who, who <laughs> did that on his mission. 
declare that on his mission. When I got out to New York, New York, that was one of the first things I heard about. Uh, I think his name was Elder Vi... I can't remember. Uh, it was a Polynesian missionary who had been legend in the New York mission when I got there, uh, who everybody was quoting, every day is a P-Day. <laughs> Preparation day, if you are unfamiliar with the term. <laughs> so yes, for the Egyptians, prior to Babylon, every day the temples were opened. And didn't have a calendar system of seven days in a week. Uh, the Egyptians had two calendars, a civil and a religious calendar. And uh, as much as I would love to put in the religious calendar dating for the total solar eclipse, it's over everybody's head. <sighs> That's for the, the big video I'm working on right now. And so... Yeah, the Bible was not written by Moses. And I didn't bring it up on the screen. So we'll have to do a Google search midstream. Sins. <coughs> Come on, where are you? There you are. All right. So Wikipedia under Maat. Maat is a goddess of judgment. The scales of judgment. Libra. Uh, in the temple. Everybody has their heart weighed on the Ma'at scales of judgment. And uh, in what's called the 42 positive affirmations, not negative confessions, <coughs> that's the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not. See here it's actually worded as, I have not committed sin. I have not committed robbery with violence. I guess you can commit robbery without violence? I have not stolen. Is that the same as robbery? I have not slain men and women. I have not stolen grain. I have not purloined offerings. I have not stolen the property of the gods. I have not uttered lies. I have not carried away food. I have not uttered curses. I have not committed adultery. I have not lain with men. I have not. I have made none to weep. I have not eaten the heart. Uh, I have not grieved uselessly or felt remorse. I have not attacked any man. I am not a man of deceit. See some repetitions here that are summarized in just ten. I have not stolen cultivated land. I have not been an eavesdropper. <laughs> I have slandered Travis Wayne Goodsell. No man. <laughs> I have not been angry with Travis without cause without without just cause. I have not debauched the wife of any man. I have not debauched the wife of any man. Repeats the previous affirmation but addressed to a different God. I have not polluted myself. I have not terrorized none. I have not transgressed the law. I have not been wroth. I have not shut my ears to the words of truth. How many of you have already shut your words and have gone away? <laughs> oh, you're already gone? I have not blasphemed. I am not a man of violence. I am not a stirrer up of strife or a disturber of the peace. I have not acted or judged 
with undue haste. I have not pried into matters. <laughs> I have not multiplied my words in speaking. I have wronged none. I have done no evil. I have not worked witchcraft against the king or blasphemed against the king. I have never stopped the flow of water. <laughs> let it flow, let it flow. I have never raised my voice, spoken arrogantly or in anger. I have not cursed or blasphemed God. I have not acted with evil rage. I have not stolen the bread of the gods. Sacrament. I have not carried away the Kenfu cakes. Uh, they're the offering cakes uh, from the spirits of the dead. I have not snatched away the bread of the child. You know, taking candy away from a child. Not treated with contempt the god of my city. I have not slain the cattle belonging to the god. Notice no Sabbath. Didn't exist. And so, this is the lesson for you today. Don't forget history. Because you're going to do something stupid and violate the original law. And as we all know, there is only one law from that, love. But uh, hold on, I'm saving the PDF because there's some other stuff in there too. Alrighty, so be nice, guys. It's okay. Watching the Super Bowl is not going to send you to hell. The Jews, if you didn't know, believe that every Jew has to obey the Sabbath day, otherwise their Messiah will not come. <laughs> Got news for you guys. He's going to come regardless. So, there you go. The superstitious Saturday Sabbath. Triple S. I was a part of the Triple S GK back in junior high. <laughs> Gumby used to be shown on Sunday mornings along with uh, David and Goliath, Davy and Goliath. <laughs> but again, I stray. And I also forgot. Uh, as uh, the Bible, therefore, was not written by Moses and uh, was uh, written during this time period, guess what also that means? I'm sure it already occurred to all of you as your jaws dropped, but nobody else will inform you of this. Just me. Guess what it means for Abinadi and the Book of Mormon? <laughs> yep. Not a real history. That should have been obvious, but uh, just in case some of you are not able to put two and two and come up with ten through synergy, uh, I thought I'd make sure you understood.